I want to start this off by saying that the WWE draft has been one of the best things to happen to WWE in ages. Finally, things are getting interesting. We're having the distinct SmackDown brand having its own thing and the Raw brand having its own thing. Now, we come to the first SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view backlash. Wait a minute. Backlash was a Raw pay-per-view for a long time, so now it's a SmackDown thing? I, whatever, whatever. It, it, we're getting Backlash, and Backlash is a pretty important pay-per-view. For a while, it was the pay-per-view after WrestleMania. It was Raw exclusive. All sorts of crazy stuff happened. It was widely known as Rematch of Mania Lash, or whatever the heck you want to call it. So, we're here to talk about Backlash 2016. Greetings, there, peoples. I am your cult of personality, Tune Critic. I am here with Kalkos. Hello. And Nikki V. Foobar. All right. So we only have six matches on this pay per view. It feels a little small, but we should be able to just drill right through these because yeah. we like it when there's not a lot of matches to cover. I, I feel like there's. There's still a couple of matches to be announced. Um, I think a pre-show match that we can expect would be Kane versus Fandango. I think. Hey, we got to get some people on this card. Is yeah. this this is the problem with um, the the solo branded pay-per-views, especially ones for SmackDown in the near future. SmackDown is not very deep, especially seeing as how John Cena is on his uh, another break. Del Rio might be gone. And might, might be have gone. Just... No, he is gone. Bye-bye, Del Rio. He may, he may have one pay-per-view left because if he signed a one-year contract at Hell in a Cell, that would give him one more month or so. But yeah. Yeesh. And Kalisto is hurt. So, feck! Let's just get into this, shall we? Mm. All right. Uh, we're going to kick this off with our first match being The Miz defending his Intercontinental Championship against... Dolph Ziggler. Okay, so you lost the big match that everyone was hyping up for SummerSlam, and your consolation prize is an Intercontinental title match that you probably won't win. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little thing in the tune of White Stripes. Enhancement talent. Enhancement talent. To enhancement, be fair. enhancement, enhance, enhancement, enhancement, enhancement talent. To be fair, The Miz is pretty much the only upper mid-card heel, and Dolph Ziggler is pretty much the only upper mid-card face. So, fuck. Again. Like, I feel like once the Cruiserweights come over to the Raw, there's going to be such a huge girth of talent over there that some people are going to start sneakily going over to, to SmackDown to try and make it seem like, hey, this isn't just totally fucking, you know, one-sided. So... Once that happens, I think that this whole problem will clear up a little bit. But for now, you know what? I think The Miz is going to get the big win here. And I think he's going to get a pretty decisive one. Because holy shit, he has been killing it the last month. Oh god, no. Miz is the new honky-tonk man. And I would not have it any other way after his his promo with... Uh, on, I shouldn't say with, I should say on Daniel Bryan was one of the single most talked about things in wrestling this year. It was mm -hmm. it was talked about by everybody. everybody. Even non-wrestling people. And I think that it is the most important thing to have happened to his his character and his career except for the real world because and i'm not underselling the real world either the real world was a very important part of mike mizzenin's career but this oh my god he may have just gotten a second wind yeah yeah definitely like i i think that he's basically going to he, he's going to hold the title maybe until next year's wrestlemania I, like i think the record is what the was record the honky meter? Is, the record is over, I think, fucking 500 days. The Honky Tonk Man has the record. Yeah, yeah. That's not going to go away anytime soon, I think. By the way, speaking of Honky Tonk Man, anybody watch Lucha Underground? Yes, and I'm not going to say what, because spoilers, but yes. Well, it, it was why. just It was just a minor minor little cameo so it's like okay uh please excuse me the record is actually 454 days by the honky tonk ah. man also okay. just for those that are curious the shortest reign is 11 minutes by dean douglas hmm. <laughs> what the fuck 
the oldest. Okay, the Wikipedia. Wait, wait, wait. Eugene Douglas is in the fr- is in franchise. Eugene Douglas, <laughs> maybe, but the oldest winner. Yeah, th- yeah. Hold on he, here. He dropped the title to Scott Hall. Hold on. The oldest winner is Ric Flair, and the fucking thing is either glitched out or somebody is playing a prank because it says he is. Let me count the zeros here. <laughs> it says he is. You know what? Uh, no, it I says it says he is. Glitch. It says he is uh, seven hundred quintillion, nine hundred seventeen quadrillion, eight hundred forty nine trillion, three hundred seventy six billion uh, to the fifty sixth power years old. <laughs> you know what? That sounds about right. <laughs> if he falls That's... down, he'll fucking get, like just disintegrate. He, he is liter- <laughs> He is literally the 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 night at the end of Indiana Jones and the the which one where they look last crusade the, last crusade yeah i can never remember which one goes with what quest oh it okay, you know okay. I mean. in raiders of the lost stark they go to egypt in uh temple of doom they go to india and um in last crusade, last they go crusade to jerusalem, they, they, they not just jerusalem but they go to one of my favorite historical buildings the petra nice the Petra is where the last thing ends, and I love the Petra. I love how they just dug right into the mountain. It's one of the only structures in the world at, at, at that time that it was it was made in that fashion. Um, in the New World, uh, there was another temple made by the Aztecs that was made in that fashion, but it was really, really small, and it is the only one made in that fashion. And, of course, a lot of conspiracy theorists like to say, Oh, dude, that's why aliens exist. Shut the fuck up. Okay, histor- I am a huge history nerd, especially when it comes to ancient structures and engineering. Had to get that out, uh, so please go on. <laughs> and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull took place in hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, I predict The Miz. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, Dolph Ziggler, he has nothing to gain from this. Like, honestly, I think that the trajectory for Dolph Ziggler here is that he feuds with the Miz for a couple months because, God, they need to pad this thing out because who else is Miz going to fight after this? Maybe Kane. Uh-huh. Should have been Cruz. I'm just saying now, Apollo Cruz should have won. No. At least with Cruz, they could probably do something with him. No, no, no. Right now, Cruz only has a gimmick. He needs a character first. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. well I would say give him the title and then give him a character to work along with it because at least no, that way you can... No, no, that's how you get no. Biggie Langston. That is how you get Biggie Langston. You give... the Remember, the man makes the title, not the other way around. You can't okay. slap a title on somebody and expect it to work because it doesn't, all right? Two words for you to help clarify that. Roman Reigns... <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Anyway, I I, I give it to the Miz is specifically because one, I don't feel very right. I I kind of feel unclean with the idea if Ziggler wins because I'm just like that's that's just shooting him in the in the foot. But then if he doesn't win, it's shooting him in both feet because like I don't get why they built up Ziggler to face Ambrose. They gave him the hottest fucking promo to if he had won that match i would have been completely fine with it but not only does he lose there now he's being sent into this match where he's probably not going to win either so i'm just like what the fuck like i got it i gotta wait for this to end okay so ziggler has like he he just had the great promo before SummerSlam, and he loses then he has this promo or program with the miz and, and he say I got to win this. I got to win this. If I don't, I've got some serious questions to ask about my own career. What do I do? Like, I must win. Otherwise, where do I go from here? All he right. loses uh, this. And then... Whoop, 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 whoop. Hi, Bray Wyatt. Oh, Here's, a Bray, lost soul for he you. Gets... Here's a lost soul for you to uh, take under your wing. Then Speaking we get of Bray Wyatt. Then into the Wyatt family. Thank you. My fantasy booking isn't quite as fucked as I thought it was when Finn Balor got hurt. Thank you very much. Good night. <clears throat> Speaking of Bray Wyatt, let's just jump to the next match. Next match is Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. Why? Because fuck all. But here's the thing. I would have loved to have seen this match earlier this year or maybe a little bit. Well, little ways first. before then because randy orton versus bray wyatt has been an, a feud in my head that i would love to see but now we're doing it here 
Probably like, not a good idea. Like Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. Like Randy Orton has that bit in his theme song, I Hear Voices in My Head. It, it makes so much sense for me for Bray Wyatt to be those voices in his head. Like, you that, know, they could I've... they could possibly develop this further after this match. They absolutely fucking could. There is a lot of potential to make Bray Wyatt look like a god. He keeps saying he's a god. He well, keeps saying he can't die. Well, so... unfortunately, their feud with the New Day, the one bad thing about the brand split is that it ended their feud with the New Day because good fucking god was that good. It made them look strong. It made them look believable. They were even delving a little bit into like the whole scary thing. That's good, but you're rushing this in, and why with Orton? Because Orton's not intimidated by this he's gonna fuck you up man he doesn't have to be intimidated okay they had a lot a lot of bray wyatt's angles they have fantastic starting points like they start very well and immediately get you invested bray wyatt um hip kind of um catching the allure of xavier woods and overpowering him the wyatt's kidnapping the undertaker last year and they they have great starting points, but for some fucking reason, they can never grow and gradually build to a good finish. Whether Bray Wyatt wins or loses the feud, they uh, I as much as I want to say I want it to to change this time. This feud will probably have a great starting point at Backlash, especially if this match goes twenty minutes or more, which I imagine it might. Because uh, you could easily make Bray Wyatt look like a legit contender through losing by doing this. And the angle could probably even start next Tuesday. And it would be a great start because they always are with Wyatt. But they can never see them through to the end. Alright? I don't understand why they want to blow their load so early. And I get it. The, their, their feud with the New Day was more just them being victims of circumstance more than anything. But I digress. They they there, gotta start letting this develop and end naturally. There is one other thing that we should consider. Mr. Luke Harper is returning to the performance center to try and get cleared. I see he's, where you're going with this. If he's cleared, we could have a similar situation to what happened uh back at Battleground last year between Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt. Anybody remember how that match ended? Yeah, and it started well. It was a good feud. Yeah. And then so, it just shat itself. Oh, well, yeah. Actually, I can't even say that, because the Hell in a Cell match that those two had was pretty darn good. Oh, no, the match was good, but un they really... Sh instead of the fucking tournament to decide the new championship, they really should have had a Survivor Series 5-on-5 five -five match, a uh, 5-on-5 five -five elimination Survivor Series match to really blow that off. Team Wyatt, Team Reigns, let them go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are you doing? What are you going to do? Regardless, right. I think, Seth, I think we're Rollins done here. Seth can't time his catastrophic knee injuries, so. Yeah. All right. Predictions. Next, yeah, predictions here. I am going to predict Orton for obvious reasons. As I'm, am I. I feel Orton needs a bounce back, and honestly, this, is, this feud is going to be far, 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 far from over. I think Wyatt wins, and it's not clean. Harper, or either Harper or... Weirdly enough, Rowan is gone for some reason. Yeah, I what guess. happened to Rowan? Did they just kick him to the side? Because as much as I like seeing Wyatt with the crew, Wyatt by himself, um, going to need to be a little bit more believable, buddy. Yeah, but I think somebody interferes on Bray Wyatt's behalf, and Bray picks up the win. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, I, I could see that. You know what? Yeah, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Nikki. Okay, uh, for the next one... Oh, what I was think that? We... I, I heard that. I heard yeah. that. Yeah, I was like, oh, I thought I had a good point that I could ride to a, a, a one point for me and zero points for you, but fuck. Next match is a second chance match for the Tag Team Tournament Finals for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. It's the Usos versus the Hype Brothers. Now, let me just let me just say that the SmackDown Tag Team Championship Tournament has been very interesting so far. We've had American Alpha just shoot up. We've had the unlikely duel of Heath Slater and Rhino pop up. But the funny thing, the hilarious thing, they built up American Alpha 
versus the Usos. They've been building it up for a while, and here I thought that was going to be the final match of the tournament. That would be great, but instead we get into the semifinals, and it ends in less than 30 seconds. And then a heel turn happens, and then they injure American Alpha, and then American Alpha gets pretty much fucked over to the sidelines. So now we have this last chance match with the Usos and the Hype Brothers. It's, it's pretty obvious Us- Usos are going to win this. Oh, it's yeah, obvious, Usos- but it's fucking awesome. It really is. Finally, the Usos have some fucking character to them. Yeah, well, they haven't gotten the character yet. Like, did well, actually, did they do anything on Talking Smack? Uh, well, they 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 popped up like um, when they weren't even scheduled to be interviewed. They're just like, yeah, here's the thing: they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, but they were acting all faceish and salty. But I'm just like, that's you know, that- these guys started as heels when they first came in, and then were suddenly roped into being faces, and then yeah. Yeah, because they got aligned with doo 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 doo. Pretty much. So, so yeah. I'm going with Usos. Oh, yeah. Usos, Usos are definitely winning this because we are not getting a rematch of the semi final match between Hype Bros and Heath Slater and Rhino. It's got to be the Usos. Got to be the yeah. Usos, which brings us to the next match, which is the one that we will likely be very, very sided on. Yeah. This one, okay. The winners of the Usos versus the Hype Brothers will go on to face Heath Slater and Rhino in the finals for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Now, this I is like good it. on either one way. On one hand, we have, okay, if I may say, on one hand, we have the Usos winning, which would be great for them because this gives them the push that they deserve and they can run as a heel tag team with the titles for as long as they want. On the other hand, Heath Slater and Rhino have been building themselves up as a competent team, and the crowd has been slowly starting to get behind them. From a storyline sense, it would make it would make sense for them to win the tag titles. But knowing that, knowing that though, my thing is if and this is my pick, Heath Slater and Rhino will win. Then the next SmackDown, they lose it to the Usos. It doesn't matter now because now they have con- now Heath Slater has a contract, so it doesn't matter anymore. He can do whatever the heck he wants. It's it's the ends that justify the means, or the means that justify the ends, or whatever the fuck you mean. Just it's it's this whole thing was set up so that Slater can get a, tr- a contract, and when the contract thing is over, they dump the tag titles back onto the Usos. The Usos are getting the titles no matter what. I think that if the Usos were to lose here, then their heel turn would have just go bleh. like I feel like they need to win here. At Backlash and cost Heath Slater his contract because the Heath Slater trying to earn his contract story, I think, still has plenty of mileage left. Like they can go a little farther with it, make Heath more and more desperate to get that contract. Maybe he gets into a program with The Miz where if you win at No Mercy for an inter or against Miz, you'll get the Intercontinental Championship and a title sh- or and a SmackDown contract. There, there's plenty of uh, of ways that this can go. Plus, you know, Rhino can go off and do his whole campaigning thing. Yeah, and even if Heath Slater and Rhino win this, Rhino's got to go back to like do his campaigning government thingy. So, although him is... campaigning with the SmackDown tag titles would be kind of fun. It would be, but we all know that Slater and Rhino as tag team champions is not going to last for very long. Give okay, so, no, give Rhino and Heath Slater the tag team championships and make sure they don't lose it until Rhino's term in, term of office is over. So he always wears the belt to press conferences and at media appearances. Like Wouldn't every that be like four time. years? Yes, yes, and uh, yes. <laughs> They should never lose it for four years. He should always just take the belt and wear it and bring it to places. I think that would be hilarious. My prediction is Heath Slater and Rhino, but that's not why. That's just a really stupid fantasy thing that I have that would be funny for about 30 minutes. Um, Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think that year three of Rhino as tag team champion would be be as hot as it is now. I, I just, I don't know, man. I think the Heath Slater... Uh, angle of like not being signed anywhere. It's a great angle. It's hilarious. It's hitting all the right notes. But you know what? You might as well end it now before it becomes tiring and old and stale. <clears throat> New day. <clears throat> 
So I'd say fucking give them the titles, and then you can do a classic fucking t- tale as old as time story of booking of having the Usos beat them up after the match. Yeah. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. Slater and Rhino win. Usos are like, dude, what the fuck? Beat them up. Next SmackDown, they get a tag title shot. Bam, bam. We, the Usos get the title. Slater's like, well, what the fuck? Oh, I have a contract on SmackDown now. So uh, uh, I'm going to go for the IC title. I'm going to be a face now. And he's already pretty much a face. But, yeah. Like, I- I'm still going to take the Usos. Like... I think that puts nuclear heat on the Usos because, like, right now everybody's just kind of like, yeah, Usos are healed. Woo! I think they need to do something really, really fucked in order to get the crowd to actually boo them. It's kind of like a Roman Reigns heel turn. Like, people are going to cheer heel Roman Reigns. And people are probably going for a little while to cheer, cheer the heel Usos. That is way too hard to say. But, um... If they cost Heath Slater his contract, I think that the crowd would be like, fuck you! So, yeah. Either way, Usos are going to are gonna win in the end through this. Let's move on to the next match. Now, this match I'm pretty hyped for. It is a elimination six-pack challenge for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. We have Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Carmella, Naomi, Natalia, and Nikki Bella. Here is all our women. This is literally all of them. And you Except know Eva. what? I kind of like it. Keep the division small. It makes them all relevant. I love the fact that each one of them has a problem with every other one. Yeah, that this is that is really good. Like, even in the uh, six six woman tag match on the last SmackDown, like, none of them got along. Like, Alexa didn't like Carmella. They've never liked each other. Um, Nikki Bella didn't like uh, Becky. They were on opposing teams at SummerSlam. It's great. Everybody hates each other. Yes, and you know what? It's it, it, As much as you we say that, we have to say this is not like the everybody hates everybody booking of old Divas division. It's yes, not is. like that. Everybody has true, real motivation to not like the others. They all have their problems with each other, and they're all legitimate. It's not just, bitches like to fat and maggle. It's not <laughs> that, okay? It's better than that. They all have storyline reasons. It's been building for a couple of months. Now, the thing is, we have six choices. I say we pick two each. No. I say we pick I say we pick two each, but you can only choose one between Becky Lynch and Nikki Bella. Nikki Bella's not winning it. Are you fucking? Nikki Bella would make are sense you, to win it. Are you one hundred percent sure about that? How oh, soon trust is the, me though, how soon gonna, is the okay. debut of Total Bellas? Exactly, exactly. They're gonna do that bullshit. But that's the old divas division bullshit. Yeah, but Nikki Bella is like better than that. Good person to come out of oh, that. you have some. Okay, listen, listen. If you have on the t- on the TV show Total Bellas, you have Nikki as as the as the women's champion. There's some storyline conflict that can just ride itself on there. <sighs> no, no, no. I'm no, no. thinking like the fucking network executive scrub that I fucking have right now. <laughs> I would very much like Chill. it if all of the all three of the heels, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, and Natalia, all land their furnishers on Nikki Bella, and she gets eliminated first. Well, okay, here's the thing. It's easy, it's easy to figure out who isn't winning this match. Alexa Naomi. Bliss isn't winning. Carmella uh, uh, is Alexa Bliss is one of my picks. Yeah. Uh, Alexa Bliss is definitely a valid choice. But Carmella, you are spot on. Carmella's not winning and Natalia's not winning. Those are the only two. And Naomi. Two- no, no, Naomi. What? I love when Naomi, oh, yeah. finally, Naomi has something good going for her. I fucking love her new entrance and style. Okay. Hopefully she got rid of her stupid-ass finisher. Naomi is the one woman that I feel like they aren't really, like, doing a great job with. Granted, when you're doing a good job with five out of the six women on the roster, I can't complain too much. That's a solid B. But, like, Naomi, her entire character is that she's a light bright. You you just don't like raves, Nikki. <laughs> you are just racist against raves. Hey. You're, ra- you're rave racist. Oh, I'm gonna fuck. slap you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm gonna fuck. see you at Nightmare Nights. I'm gonna slap the <laughs> fuck out of you, Slap. See, Nikki, Nikki. I've been, working on, I've been working on a new submission finisher that I intend to use on you. 
Yeah, it's called the fucking kick you in the nuts. Uh, okay. Could so you Captain imagine Blue? Joey Styles calling that? Oh my oh god, my Nikki god. just just fucking kicked Tune in the nuts. <laughs> I mean, that is. Okay. Uh, Calcos, what are your two picks? Oh, fuck me. I am going to be picking Becky Lynch because, God fucking damn it, it's time. It, it is, is time. I think that would be a great moment of redemption, all right? Especially since two of the four horsewomen have already had their big moments on the main roster. Charlotte, well, she won the Divas uh, Divas Championship first, and she was the first women's champion. Sasha Banks, fucking, it might kind of be ruined now, but goddamn, that moment on the first brand split Raw will never, ever be forgotten. Now, it's time for the third person to have it all right becky lynch should really be the first smackdown woman's champion as far as bailey goes well when it comes to bailey's character we've seen on nxt that you can stretch that shit out you can make it last forever if you want to because when she wins that championship (gasps) i think becky lynch is one of my picks uh, my second pick is Naomi, mostly because I like Naomi. Her offense is fun. I don't think she's using the rear end anymore, okay? Thank God. Here's the I... thing. The, if they're going to use the rear end, change it, okay? All you have to do is change it. Make it a turnbuckle butt splash, all right? I get it. Rikishi did. No, she's using the split leg moonsault now, I think. That's also good, okay? That's also good. The split leg moonsault is great, but the rear end can absolutely be just a torn buckle butt splash because, yes, I get it. Naomi's ass is a thing uh, that was crafted by the gods, okay? I understand that. <laughs> but... I don't agree to this. <laughs> but um, but you, the rear end was just such a stupid fucking finishing move. Maybe she was a shitty wrestler back then, and that's all she could do. But now, she's not a shitty wrestler anymore. Okay? Especially with her legs. She is very, very good at kicking. So, yeah. is I guess it's fair to say that between Naomi and uh, fucking... I, got a bad I forgot her. A bad pun coming I here. forget who the fuck... Who is the other? Who is the other bitch that she was with? In, um, Cameron? In, uh, no, no, no. The Tamina. Um, Tamina? Who? No, no, not Tamina. No, 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 not Tamina. Tamina. The um, the the when she was at the Funkadactyls. Um, Cameron. Yeah. So I guess in this situation, fucking out of the two of them, they only got the better deal, and fucking what's her face got Janetti. So. Yeah. Whoops. Well, she did say that shit when uh, Ryback started talking shit. So. All right, so my picks are Becky Lynch and Naomi. Uh, Nikki, what are your picks? My picks are Becky Lynch because fucking finally! And also Alexa Bliss because she has been killing it on the main roster as she has been killing it in NXT. Yes, I will agree to that with Alexa Bliss. Two, your picks. Oh, no. Okay, so mine are Lynch and uh, Nikki. I think putting it on Nikki would make sense given that she, out of everyone there, has the most star power and, I guess, credibility. But I want to mention Credibil- something about Bliss. Credibil- okay, given – let's just say that Nikki has, like, the most star power. Okay. Out of them. But, no, when when Alexa Bliss just showed up and was just like, will such and such ever? And she looks to Daniel Bryan and says, will Daniel Bryan be anything more than a Bella, like, trophy husband? My jaw dropped. Woo! I'm just like, oh, shit. She did not. That was good. <laughs> See, I like – Alexa Bliss as a heel, I think she plays bitch very, very, very well. Dude, if the car if they play their cards right, Alexa Bliss is the next Trish Stratus. One hundred percent. I like that's a bold statement, but I feel like it's on course. Now we're on to the final match, the main event. Dean Ambrose defending his WWE World WWE Championship against AJ Styles. AJ now, have- Styles. AJ Styles. During the Stone AJ Cold Styles. Pod- this isn't going to stop anytime soon, is it? It'll stop now. Go on. Okay. During the Stone AJ Cold. AJ Styles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tune. Internet high five. <laughs> I hate you people. I hate you people so much. Okay, please, Nikki, go on. Okay. Go on. During the Stone Cold podcast, 
Stone Cold said that Dean Ambrose was resting on his laurels. I personally don't think that was the case. But ever since his match at SummerSlam, the one that was kind of eh, against Dolph Ziggler, like a lot of people have been accusing Dean of doing just that, resting on his laurels. What do you two think? Dean is better when he's chasing the title. I've said it before, I'm saying it now, and I'll keep saying it till I'm blue in the face, especially if he wins here. Ambrose needs to chase. And I honestly think, just looking for at this, Styles is better at having the championship, okay? For example, Cena... Cena was usually better when he had the championship. Now, that's not saying... Uh, much because his old run during the PG era sucked balls, but look at his run for the United States Championship, okay? He was the champion, and he really, for the first time in a long time, he felt like a true champion, an obstacle to overcome, not the guy that was supposed to overcome the obstacles. It was perfect, all right? And then you look at Dean Ambrose, and his championship run was very good against Ziggler, but ever since SummerSlam, he just fucking, for me, it's just not worth it to have it on him anymore. The guy is good at short reigns, multiple reigns, and instead of having one long, lengthy reign like what Cena had with the U.S. title. Ambrose is better when he's chasing. I feel like Ambrose is better when he's chasing, but at the same time, like the stuff that he's been doing since SummerSlam, like SummerSlam was not his best night. I'll I'll say that. But the stuff that he's done on SmackDown since then, I thought has been pretty good. Like he he dragged Baron Corbin to a pretty good match. Let me say that one more time. He dragged Baron Corbin to a good match. Corbin, I think, uh, we, we named him as the most improved wrestler of 2015. We named He's him evolving before our eyes. It's because his booking sucks right now, okay? SmackDown, as great as it is at building up talent and making everybody seem important, Corbin is on ice right now, and I have a feeling that once they give him something really good to work on, we'll start seeing a lot more from him. I have a feeling that, that Corbin is a lot like Orton in that he'll, he'll fucking, he will tear the fucking house down every single night if you give him something good but if you don't he's just gonna wing it yeah but um like and his promo that or ambrose's promo that he had on styles on the go home smackdown where he just kept going and going and going and did not stop and didn't stutter one time he is great at that like the the rapid fire promo where he gets off everything without letting the audience have a chance to go what that is great. And uh, and on top of that, the content that he was saying, like offering uh, AJ Styles the participation trophy a month after he said he hated those. That was cool. But yeah, like I, I, I feel like I'm one of the few people who actually does like the rain so far. However, I do feel like it's coming to an end at some point in the near future. Not here. At no mercy. I think Styles picks up the title there. I think Ambrose wins sneakily. Are you predicting a heel turn? Well, okay, one, he, his heel work at SummerSlam was mwah, perfecto, okay? Mm -hmm. Made himself look like a true heel, and I think Ambrose would be great as a heel uh, once the crowd starts to turn on him a little bit. Just make the switch. It's perfect. He's good at it. But for me, here's the kicker when it comes to AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose. One, mm -hmm. fucking, I hate the two-match series where on the first match, the champion retains, and the second one, the champion loses to the person he faced in the first match. I hate it. It's predictable. It's boring. I don't like it. But here's mm -hmm. the other thing. Dean Ambrose is 31 years old. AJ Styles is 39 years old. If you're going to pull the trigger, do it while you still can. Hmm. The age difference is staggering. Now, that's not to say that Ambrose doesn't have too much left. We'll have to see how his mileage goes after his days in CZW. Um, but at the same time, Styles fucking... 
Jesus Christ, the guy needs his run on top sooner rather than later, which is why I'm glad that Finn Balor and Kevin Owens were able to have their time to shine. Kevin Owens way more than Finn Balor for obvious reasons, but at the very least, Finn Balor was predicted to win the championship uh, in, in the beginning, before the dislocated shoulder happened. It's good because these guys are aging. They are getting older, whereas people like Reigns, Rollins... Ambrose, they've had their moments, okay? You can allow them to rest for a little while because they're all still young. They're still young, and they still have at least 10 years left. Styles is a big gray area. He ain't getting any younger. Pull the trigger on him now. All right. All right. Like, it, it, it's a toss-up for me, but I guess I'll go with Styles. I'm going to go with Styles too, and Toon is going to go with Dean Ambrose. All right, everybody, that was a great cast. Hold on, hold on. Jeez, I didn't even get to say my piece yet. Shit. <laughs> well, we already know who you're predicting. <laughs> well, you didn't hear why. Jesus. Why? Because you want Dean Ambrose to pound you no, in no, the no. ass. No, no, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want <laughs> Styles to win. Arr? What? Uh, what? Here's what? The what? Thing. Oh, okay, a... what? Okay. I want Styles to win. I absolutely agree with you guys. The way that they're pushing Styles right now is perfect. The fact that he beat John Cena, the fact he's running with the whole the face that runs this place thing. He is milking this for like everything that it's worth. It to, for him to win the title here would be perfect. It does help that apparently Vince really likes AJ Styles. Which is really hilarious. Since Look, he was the anybody, if Vince, if, Vince, if Vince doesn't like you, you're not going clean over Cena. OK, oh, yeah. simply bad, bad. simply put, if you go clean over Cena, it means that Vince likes you. OK, Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, Vince likes you. So I'm still going to go with Ambrose winning, but I want Styles to win. I will be happy if Styles wins. I don't think that Ambrose is at his best chasing the title. He works best with what he's got now he's developing into his character he's developing into the not the guy that you would expect to be his champion the i, I don't know how to put it into words it's this aura the that he gives off. it's kingpin yeah it's the personality that he gives off like his promos are like better than ever his his storytelling in the ring is better than ever he's at his finest right here let him run with the title to like wrestlemania or something I, mm. Give this, give him. If he's only ever going to get one big title reign like this, make it last, make it memorable. So WWE's, far, it's off to a great start. WWE's programming style doesn't allow for long reigns. It doesn't. Okay, the New Day. Fucking glad that they had their long reign. And but keep in mind, it was all them that allowed them to extend their reign this far. And and I. Fucking, they should have lost that shit at SummerSlam. Everybody agrees they should have lost that shit at SummerSlam to Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Although they should have clashed champions, probably. Yeah, at the same... Who are they facing at Clash of Champions? The club again? The club! Okay, yeah. have them drop it there. The problem is, for two reasons. One, well, it would have completed the Bullet Club list of dominance because they were the only missing link in the Bullet Club establishing dominance, okay? Styles won clean over Cena. Vin Baller won the Universal Championship. Kenny Omega won the G1. And Adam Cole won the Ring of Honor Championship, okay? They were the only missing link. And I think that would have been great to see the Bullet Club dominate in three different major promotions. But, um... So, this... wait, wait, hang on. You two said... Hey, Calcos, you said Ambrose or Styles? Styles. And I'm saying Styles because long reigns tend to not work very well in the WWE. They have more programming than any other promotion possibly combined. All right. There is how many hours of WWE programming per week at minimum? Okay, okay not three, counting the. Three, for, three hours for Raw, two hours for SmackDown, one hour, hour for NXT. NXT, one hour for C. CWC. Well, CWC is sma- temporary. Okay, six oh, hours right six. now, plus talking smack, which is quickly becoming must-watch television, which is another half hour. That's six yeah. and a half hours. Okay, you can't fucking have long championship reigns with that much programming. But you can't keep hot potatoing the championship like they did a few years ago because then it just – the relevance of the title just goes straight down the fucking toilet if it's being just passed around like fucking candy. Then it's a balance of pacing, okay? WWE needs to be more fast-paced than other 
promotions because they air so much more programming. You have to make sure it's fast enough to keep people's attention. The swerves that they've been doing recently are doing one hell of a job, okay? Fucking The Miz, Brock Lesnar, Kevin Owens, and Triple H. You get the picture. They've been doing a good job with that. But long as fuck championship reigns... Man, unless you allow the wrestlers to have true creative freedom and allow them to run with it like Cena did, like the New Day did, like The Miz is doing now, you gotta fucking have short reigns. And again, the age thing, okay? AJ Styles could break his legs tomorrow, and you may never know what his run would be like as WWE World Champion. Well, if he wins the title on Sunday and he breaks his leg tomorrow, then it kind of makes the whole thing pointless. <laughs> then Ambrose can pick the title back up, and it, it would be like what happened with it, uh, with Seth Rollins and uh, Finn Balor. Kind of. Be like, at the, at only the this same, time, only this time, Dean actually does win the thing. At the I mean, same, who you, at the who same. Who did you pick, by the way, Nikki? Hmm? Who did you pick? Begrudgingly, I'm taking Styles. Okay. I I honestly think that Ambrose. He's better at chasing, okay? I know, I, I think I'm the only one that says that, but man, pull the fucking trigger on Styles, okay? All right, don't let his clean win against Cena go to fucking waste. Don't let it go to waste. Mm. Okay. <laughs> all right, on that awkward note, um... <laughs> All right, uh, so before we go, I, I guess I guess we a... didn't. I, I, what I'm thinking is, I guess we didn't put that into the equation. <laughs> uh, before we go, I want to do this new thing with the audience. I want to ask you guys like a the comment question. Is that cool? Sure. Of course, it, it's yeah. your cast too, buddy. Yay! Okay, so I have practically a question. migrated over here. You practically moved in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a question for the audience, and I guess you guys can answer this too. Which indie star do you want to see come to WWE knowing full well that whatever character they have in the indies is going to get watered the fuck down? Ricochet. Ricochet? Re oh, works. God. Wow, that's a good thing because with Ricochet, dude, it doesn't fucking matter. The guy will light up the cruiserweight division. Oh, yeah. All right, the cruiserweight, <clears throat> the cruiserweight division will... Um, the, I mean, the cruiserweight division honestly should just be sports centric like legit go kayfabe with it have true power rankings with up to the minute statistics i'd be neat with that oh i know you'd be neat with that but i think <laughs> that's what they should be doing take the cruiserweight classic and bring it to the cruiserweight division just legit copy pasta <laughs> all right calcos what's your answer to the question Fucking, I have to agree with Zach. I can't think of anybody else because <laughs> a lot of my favorite uh, wrestlers, uh, it's it's less to do with their work rate and more to do with their character. Like, it's mm. all about the character for me. Um, uh, but uh, work rate, I do still appreciate. But, man, I became a fan of AJ Styles once he proved that he could be a heel. Mm -hmm. Like, a good fucking heel, which means he'll be an even better face later on down the line. Like that's that's what really really got brought AJ Styles to me. So when it comes to uh, bringing someone over, knowing that their character is going to get completely fucked, God, I'd probably have to say, goodness gracious me, Ricochet. Oh, you sense. know what? He, he... Fucking, you know, you know who I'd bring over? Hiroshi Tanahashi. Okay, because that Hiroshi Ta Hiroshi Tanahashi's character resonates well with the Japanese audience, but not so much with the American audience. So it's really not going to matter either way. Hmm. Fair enough. All right. You guys can answer that in the comments. I would say either Ricochet or maybe Kenny Omega. No, God, no. Kenny Omega is so character dependent. Remember, he's a Bullet Club member. And in fact, not only the Bullet Club member, but the current captain. Yeah. It would not be smart to take out the captain and then have them like like shuffle around to figure out who's going to be the new leader. Also, uh, also Kenny Omega... Well, that Omega, ended up happening with AJ Styles left. Kenny Omega right now, after winning the G1, is, argu is not arguably, but easily one of the top three wrestlers of this year, guaranteed a spot in that slot. So... Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I'll I will go with say Ricochet. just a closing remark before we close the cast. I love how when WWE poached New Japan for talent, they were just like, 
uh, you you took Shinsuke Nakamura from us. Okay, here's Kenny Omega. <laughs> it's okay. It's cool. We have a backup. <laughs> and if they poach Kenny Omega, which they likely won't, I don't think Kenny Omega will ever go to to WWE. It, oh but, yeah, didn't uh, he have a problem with them once? I, I, it's less that and more. I don't think he would like to take the risk. Yeah, he'd probably be getting more money, but he wants to wrestle. He's in a spot now in New Japan where he can wrestle on his own terms. He does whatever the fuck he wants. He is the first Gaijin to win the G1! For real, that's so huge! Yep, so, uh, that being said, uh, go ahead and put the comments below, Nikki's comedy question, and also what your predictions for Backlash are. Um, we will be doing a predictions on Clash of Champions, right? I think we will. Yeah, of course. Like, okay. We're going to, yeah, we're going like, to, at this but, point, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, Nikki, for interrupting you, but I'm the one that's like editing the podcast. So it's all time dependent on me mostly. So yeah, go I, for it. I, I would like to answer this. It all depends on whether I have time for it. My job is v- my current job. It cashes fat checks. I'm making at least double the money that I was with my old jobs, but they are it's very time dependent. I work very long hours. I w- wake up very early in the morning. So working, for example, on the Haymakers Tournament Spectacular has been hard, but thankfully the hardest parts are behind me. And at this point, I'm just waiting for other people to finish what they have for me, which hopefully Nikki won't take too much longer. I am almost done. I've, I've got like two and a half minutes in on it. Good. So this, hardest... is why, this is why um, what we've recently been talking about as well, we're thinking of bringing reserves. We have at least three people on standby that can possibly rotate in if needed. So we have backups uh, just yes, in case. Yes, that actually is one thing that we, we mentioned. We haven't gone into full discussion, so this is still up in the air. But we may do our own brand split where – we have three other people join the cast, but they cover the Raw pay-per-views, and we cover the SmackDown pay-per-views, and really, all, all three of... Didn't you mention this at some point? Well, I said, no, I said the three of us would cover Raw, and they'd cover SmackDown. Oh, okay, I, mi- I must have missed that part, but regardless, my point still stands. That that might how it, how it be. We, we also might split us up, just a, a, an idea, because that's what I thought. I thought we were going to get split up, but for the big pay-per-views, it would be us. Oh, three. We'll, we'll figure it out in post. Yeah, that's, we'll figure it out that's what post. we're thinking we might do, because we do have some people that are willing to co- podcast full-time for the cast. Uh, which would definitely lighten my workload by quite a bit, as well as the workload of all of us. Um, so we're going to have to see what happens with that. But if it does happen, then then rest assured, I will put out a vlog detailing the changes and telling you exactly the future of the cast as it stands. But for now, this has been The Haymakers, and we are signing off. Oh, yeah. Backlash. One last thing. Oh. One last thing. Stick, uh, stick your eyes out for something, because the three of us, along with a certain, uh, certain keyframe, will be taking a look at WWE and Scooby-Doo, Curse of the Speed Demon. Hey. Hey. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, where are you? Whose idea was this? Fucking Christ, I hate you. Whose idea was this? This is my idea. Three! Three kicks to the nuts. Ah, ah, ah. Good night, everybody.